there are different ways to define what is an asset in a base. I mean, obviously, you know, we said, well, it turns litmus paper red or blue. Well, that's useful, but we need something a little more theoretical. So we're going to talk about two different definitions. The first one um, is the Arrhenius definition. And this definition says that an acid produces hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. So if we look at hydrochloric acid, um, we learned to recognize HCl as hydrochloric acid. And that is an acid when it's dissolved in water, but it's actually a covalent compound in its pure form, and it's a gas at room temperature. It's hydrogen chloride. There's a covalent bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine. But when you put that into water, it ionizes and forms hydrogen ions. And so we define that as an acid because it produces hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. Now, those hydrogen ions are very reactive. Let's think about what a hydrogen ion is. Let's start with a hydrogen atom. How many electrons? One. And how many protons? One. So if we make an H plus ion, we do that by get, getting rid of the electron, right? What's left? A proton. A hydrogen ion is exactly the same thing as a free proton. These hydrogen ions, these protons, are very, very unstable, very reactive. And so they're not going to be hanging around by themselves. They're going to re react with pretty much anything. Well, in aqueous solution, what is there a lot of? There's a lot of water molecules. So here's this hydrogen ion who is not happy. Remember we talked about um, Lewis theory and how atoms will react in a way to get eight valence electrons. Here this poor hydrogen atom ion, excuse me, the hydrogen ion doesn't have any electrons. He wants two electrons. That's, he's, he follows the duet rule because he's really small. So here's this hydrogen ion, and he is looking for electrons, and here's this water molecule, and the water molecule has two lone pairs. And so this guy's like desperate. Oh, please, please, share your electrons with me. And the oxygen's like, well, okay. So the oxygen shares two electrons with the hydrogen, forming a covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen. And does this really affect the happiness of the oxygen? Still has it eight valence electrons. It doesn't really affect the oxygen that much, but it makes that hydrogen atom really happy. So that's one way to think about it. So here now we've got H3O, and it's positive because we added a positive charge to it. It didn't bring any electrons along. It just brought the proton. So that's one way to think of it. I also like to think of these hydrogen ions or protons like mm, three-month-old babies at Disneyland. Do you see three-month-old babies at Disneyland running around on the sidewalks? No, they can't run, right? Do you see them just sitting around, laying around on the sidewalk? No. Are there three-month-old babies at Disneyland? There are. Where are they? They're in the stroller or in mommy or daddy's arms, right? Somebody's holding them. Someone is taking care of them. You don't just leave them laying around. These hydrogen ions are too small to be left alone. So it's going to ride. Think of it as being held or riding piggyback on the water molecule. And it's, it's more comfortable that way. Okay. So this ion here, and, and we'll get back to the babies at Disneyland. Um, this ion has a special name. It's called the hydronium ion. And in an aqueous solution, those hydrogen ions always associate with the water. Just like at Disneyland, you don't see them out by themselves. They are always associated with water, never found alone. We often use H plus aqueous and H3O plus aqueous interchangeably. Because we recognize when we see this, this is a hydrogen ion in aqueous solution. It's going to be riding on a water molecule. But sometimes it's simpler. So we, we sometimes use H+, but we always recognize that that's not actually what's, what's happening. 
When we write formulas for acids, we generally write the ionizable hydrogen first. Remember, an acid will produce a hydrogen ion in solution if a hydrogen ion comes off. Whichever hydrogen ion is going to come off is what we write first. So here, formic acid has this formula, HCHO2. And you might wonder, well, why don't we put the two H's together? Well, because only one of them comes off in solution. The other one does not. And here we can look at the structure of this molecule. This carbon is double bonded to one oxygen, single bonded to another, and single bonded to this hydrogen. This hydrogen over here on the carbon is not going to come off. The hydrogen on the oxygen will. Okay, there are, there are good reasons for that, but that's covered in organic chemistry, so we're not going to talk about that. But when we look at formulas for um, acids, whichever hydrogens are written first are the ones that will um, form ions. And then the definition of a base, according to Arrhenius, is that it produces hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. So sodium hydroxide is an example. It's an ionic compound. It contains sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And when it dissolves, it forms sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And so we can see very, very clearly how that works. It's just a soluble ionic compound, and it makes hydroxide ions. It's important to note that molecular compounds that have OH in them are not going to do that. Here, this is the formula for methanol, which is an alcohol. It looks like a base here because it has OH on it, but it's not a base. So here with the Arrhenius bases, we're only looking at ionic compounds, things like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So we said that um, an acid forms hydrogen ions, so there they are, and we didn't write the water molecule that it's piggybacking on, but we understand that it's being held by something. So here's the hydrogen ion produced by the acid. Here's the hydroxide ion that's produced by the base. A base produces hydroxide ions. If we put these two together, they will make a water molecule. So we see how acids and bases neutralize each other and form water. This is the net ionic equation for acid-base neutralization reactions. So that's, that's really great, and that was really useful, but there are some substances that act as bases even though they don't have hydroxide ions in them. And the Arrhenius definition doesn't account for those. It also doesn't deal with uh, non-aqueous solutions. It only works in aqueous solutions. So we have another definition, the Bronsted-Lowry definition. The definition of the acid is really similar. Arrhenius said that an acid produced hydrogen ions. Bronsted-Lowry say that an acid is a proton donor. That's a hydrogen ion donor. Okay, proton, hydrogen ion, same thing. Proton. Oh, writing with the eraser, never a good idea. Proton equals hydrogen ion. Those can be used interchangeably. So the acid's the proton donor. The base is the proton acceptor. And this applies to a much wider range of acid-base interactions. And what we're doing is we're focusing on the transfer of the hydrogen ions. So this definition works even in non-aqueous solutions. So let's look at HCl again. When we put HCl in water, it reacts with the water. We learned earlier that it ionized, right? So we had hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The hydrogen ion is not going to want to be by itself, and it's going to go hang out on the water molecule, giving us that hydronium ion. And after the hydrogen ion has left, we have a chloride ion. So here, the HCl is donating a proton to the water molecule. It's donating. So it's like the parents, they're in line and they want to ride Space Mountain at Disneyland, right? Will they let you take your three-month-old baby? 
And you can say, yeah, but I'm going to hold on to him really tight. And they're like, no, you can't go on here with a baby. He's not tall enough, right? What do you do with the baby? You pass him to somebody else. Here, hold him, you know. Maybe your husband, you're going to use that. Uh... It's been a long time. They have a word for it. It's not the fast pass thing, but it's where you both get to the front of the line and you get to kind of tag team. Anyway, you know what I mean. So you, you hand it to your husband or to a friend who acts as the babysitter, right? The base is the babysitter. So here, hydrochloric acid is donating the proton. It's passing off the hydrogen ion, the proton, to the water molecule. The water molecule is accepting it. Here we have, um, looking at ammonia, which acts as a base, but doesn't really fit the Arrhenius definition very well. Here, ammonia reacting with water. Water is going to donate a hydrogen ion to the ammonia, forming ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. And so here, water is acting as the acid, and the ammonia is acting as the base. This is a better place to really talk about all this. We always have proton donate, donating and proton accepting at the same time. Okay, so if I'm handing my baby to my husband, he is at the same time accepting the baby, right? He can't accept the baby if I don't hand it to him. And so there's always donating and accepting. They go hand in hand. So here we have the acid donating the proton to the water. The water is acting as the base, forming hydronium ion. Here we have a base, ammonia, and water is acting as the acid. The base accepts the proton. Water now is donating the proton to the base, and that's where we get NH4. We added a hydrogen ion to this. So water is crazy stuff. It can act as an acid or a base. It's very flexible that way. And we have a word for that. It's called amphoteric. So ampho is the same prefix on amphibian. An amphibious vehicle can be driven on land or in the water, right? Frogs can live on the land or in the water, right? They're amphibians. So an amphoteric substance can either accept or donate a proton, depending on what's needed. If we take that equation, let's go back and look at it real quick. If we take this equation right here, and we're just going to flip it. This is an equilibrium. It's going in both ways. We're just going to write it the opposite way. So we're going to take the ammonium and the hydroxide and make those the reactants and make these the products. That's what this reaction is here. When we reverse that reaction, look what happens. NH4 plus is acting as an acid now. It's donating a proton to the hydroxide. The hydroxide is acting as a base, accepting the proton, becoming water. So we had an acid and a base going forward, and we have an acid and a base going in reverse. This is the acid in the forward reaction, as it's written here. This is a base in the reverse reaction. So we call those a conjugate acid-base pair. They are related to each other. Conjugate acid-base pair is two substances related to each other by the transfer of a proton. See, so if I take NH3 and add a hydrogen ion to it, what do I get? I get NH4 plus. This is a conjugate acid-base pair. If I take hydroxide ion and add a hydrogen to it, I get water. This water and the hydroxide are a conjugate acid-base pair. There are two substances. The only difference between them is one's holding the baby and the other isn't.
So any two substances related by the transfer of a proton. So let's look at, at these two. Water, water and hydroxide, and ammonia and ammonium. So here's the ammonia. It's got three white balls and one blue ball. If we add a hydrogen, we're adding another white ball. The difference between these two is just an H+. Plus. And down here, the difference between H2O and OH- minus is just one H+. Plus. So this is a conjugate acid-base pair, and these are conjugate acid-base pairs. When we look at the equation, here the base, we can see that this is the base because we look at the one over here that is most like it. So this one has N and H. This one has N and H. That has O and H, right? This one is more like that one. They're a pair. The difference is this one's got three hydrogens. That one's got four and a charge. And the difference between these two is just H+. plus. So this is the base. It gained, an, uh, blah, blah, blah. it gained a proton to become this. This is the conjugate acid. Here, this is the acid because it donated the proton to the base. After it donates it, now it becomes the conjugate base. So imagine a man and a woman, and they're passing the baby back and forth, right? If I have the baby, I'm an acid because I can donate, I can hand off the proton, the baby. When I don't have the baby, I'm a base. I'm like a babysitter. I could take and hold the baby for you. I'm the same person. It's just, am I holding the baby or not? And that's the difference between a conjugate acid, between the substances in that conjugate acid base pair. One's holding the baby, one isn't. Does that make sense? So in each of these reactions, we're supposed to identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. So usually we refer to the reactants as the acid and base, and the products would be the conjugate versions. So if we look at this first one, we see that this first compound in the reactants and the first compound in the products are the most similar, right? This, this is a subject that can seem complicated, complicated and confusing, but it's really kind of like one of those Sesame Street games, you know, which one of these things doesn't belong, which one is not like the other. We're just looking for what's the most similar. So this one and this one are most similar. So these are going to be a pair, and the other two are going to be a pair. And then we look, well, what happened to this one? How is this one and this one, what's different about them? This one's holding the baby, right? So this one accepted the baby. This one acted as the babysitter. He's accepting it, and so he must be the base. Who was originally holding the baby, the hydrogen ion? The water. Let's look over here. Now it doesn't have it anymore. It gave it away. So the water molecule gave a hydrogen ion to this guy that we're just not even going to bother naming because it doesn't matter. So that's the acid. If you're a base and you hold somebody's baby, then you become the conjugate acid because now you have a baby, which you could give to someone else. This analogy is going going south fast. We may, I may have to go back to hot potato. But the babies, the babies work better because nobody would leave a baby on the sidewalk. Would somebody leave a hot potato on the sidewalk? Sure, you get tired of holding it, right? So you just set it on the sidewalk and walk away. Oh, I did that wrong. That's not the conjugate base. This is the conjugate acid. This is the base the pair on the other, the, the one on the other side that matches up with it is the conjugate acid. This is the acid, so over here this is the conjugate base.
So let's look at the, the next one. If I'm going to pair these up, what should I pair this one with in the products? The NO3. Okay, those are the most alike. And the H2O should be paired with what? The H3O+. plus. So that's not too hard, right? Just finding which of the reactants and which product are the most alike and just connect them. Those are the members of the pair. Now we just have to decide which one's the acid and which one's the base. Well, what happened here? From HNO3 to NO3 minus, did it accept a proton or donate one? It donated. Proton donor is an acid. If that's the acid, this one must be the base, but let's check. H2O, how did it get to H3O plus? By accepting or donating? Accepting. It's got the baby now. This one donated the baby, and the H2O accepted it. So this is the base. The base is like the babysitter, the one that accepts it. So if this is the acid, the one it's connected to is the conjugate base. This one's the base. The one it's connected to is the conjugate acid. It's just too long to write out conjugate. Any questions?